Shalom brothers and sisters. I have been waiting for a response from Hamas terrorist organization to the proposed, the latest proposed peace deal um, one hour ago, okay? And then over the last half hour, um, Jerusalem Post, they posted on their official verified Twitter X page um, the fact that Qatar's Prime Minister Mohammed bin Abdel Rahman Al Thani and the head of Egyptian intelligence Abbas Kamal, they did meet with the Hamas negotiating team on Wednesday evening in Doha. Um, and this first article is a must for the five wise virgins and the one woman bride to take note of. Um, yeah, because we are commanded to watch. We have to watch because this is clearly screaming, uh, they shall seek peace and there shall be none, which is Ezekiel 7.25, which correlates with 1 Thessalonians 5.3. And so, yeah, the five wise and the one woman bride of Matthew 25.1, original Aramaic version. Yeah, uh, they really have to take note of this. Um, it was posted over the past hour by Jerusalem Post. Um, the meeting was intended to try to get Hamas to ease its new demands on the release of additional Palestinian prisoners serving life sentences in Israel. Um, Hamas negotiating delegation claimed that the terror group is ready to implement a ceasefire agreement based on President Biden's original plan laid out in July, but rejects any new conditions according to their telegram on Wednesday night. Hamas said... They were ready immediately to implement the ceasefire agreement based on President Biden's previous announcement and Security Council Resolution Number 2735. And what was previously agreed upon, especially the agreements of July 2nd, um, without setting any new demands and its rejection of any new conditions on this agreement by any party. Um, however, Hamas said it welcomed continuing negotiations in an effort to reach a ceasefire, the withdrawal of the IDF from the Gaza Strip, and the exchange of prisoners. The delegation was headed by Qatar's uh, Prime Minister Mohammed bin Abdel Rahman Al Thani and the head of Egyptian intelligence Abbas Kamal, met with the Hamas negotiating team on Wednesday evening in Doha. The meeting was headed by the deputy head of the political bureau, Khalil al -Iyar. Um The purpose of the meeting was to try to break the deadlock in talks about the hostage deal and the ceasefire in Gaza, according to three sources who commented on the meeting details. Um, the meeting was intended to try to get Hamas to give up its demands regarding the release of additional Palestinian prisoners serving life sentences in Israel, the sources said. Senior American officials said that these new demands from Hamas are the main obstacle in the current negotiations. Um, a senior Israeli official said the negotiations are at a complete impasse and estimated that even the meeting in Doha would not lead to a breakthrough. Um, the U.S., Egypt, and Qatar are still working on a new and updated mediation proposal to present to Israel and Hamas. Um, during the last two weeks, according to senior American officials, the White House has become very skeptical about the possibility of reaching a deal in the immediate time frame due to the new demands of Hamas. Um, the White House is re-examining its strategy for the release of the hostages and a ceasefire in Gaza, and President Biden's top aides are debating on whether there is any point in presenting a new proposal as Hamas and Israel have further hardened their positions in the negotiations. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the head of the CIA Will Burns stated that the U.S. may present a new and updated proposal in the coming days. Still, senior White House officials say such a move is not expected in the coming days. Um, Biden's advisors spoke with senior officials in Qatar and Egypt several times this week, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. They made it clear to them that Hamas's demand 
to release more prisoners serving life sentences in Israeli prisons is excessive, according to senior American officials. Senior Israeli and American officials say that Hamas is demanding the release of 100 more prisoners in addition to the 150 prisoners that the parties have already agreed on. Um, American officials say that this new demand is the reason for the stagnation in the talks. Um, the sources added that the U.S. asked Egypt and Qatar to increase the pressure on Hamas to withdraw from its new demands. White House spokesperson Spokesman John Kirby said on Tuesday uh, the U.S., Egypt, and Qatar were still trying to reach a proposal that both Israel and Hamas would agree on. Um, what is not clear to us is whether we will succeed in reaching this and whether Hamas will agree to come to the negotiating table honestly and sign something, said Kirby. Okay, that um, was posted on Telegram and on uh, Twitter X over the past hour from the official verified uh, Jerusalem Post. Um, uh, um, yeah, from, from, from their headquarters. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, and so this next, bear with me one second, brothers and sisters. This next next article um, is also from Jerusalem Post staff, and it was actually published on their official verified Twitter page 37 minutes ago. Um, okay, Hamas in Doha ready to implement ceasefire based on the July deal. Um, okay, the meeting was intended to try to get Hamas to ease its new demands on the release of additional Palestinian prisoners serving life sentences in Israel. Um, Hamas's negotiating delegation claimed that the terror group is ready to implement a ceasefire agreement based on President Biden's original plan laid out in July, but rejects any new conditions according to their telegram on Wednesday night. Hamas said they were ready immediately to implement the ceasefire agreement based on President Biden's previous announcement in Security Council Resolution Number 2735 and what was previously agreed upon, especially the agreements of July 2nd, without setting any new demands and its rejection of any new conditions on this agreement by any party. Um, however, Hamas said it welcomed continuing negotiations in an effort to reach a ceasefire, the withdrawal of the IDF from the Gaza Strip, and the exchange of prisoners. The delegation was headed by Qatar's Prime Minister Mohammed bin Abdel Rahman Al Thani, and the head of Egyptian intelligence uh, Abbas Kamal met with the Hamas negotiating team on Wednesday evening in Doha. The meeting was headed by the deputy head of the P political bureau Khalil Al Iya. Um, the purpose of the meeting was to try to break the deadlock in talks about the hostage deal and the ceasefire in Gaza, according to three sources who commented on the meeting details. The meeting was intended to try to get Hamas to give up its new demands regarding the release of additional Palestinian prisoners serving life sentences in Israel, the sources said. Um, senior American officials said that these new demands from Hamas are the main obstacle in the current negotiations. Um, okay. The U.S., Egypt, and Qatar are still working, as of today, on a new and updated mediation proposal to present to Israel and Hamas. Okay. Um, the White House, as of today, is re-examining its strategy for the release of the hostages and a ceasefire in Gaza, and President Biden's top aides are debating whether there is any point in presenting a new proposal as Hamas and Israel have further hardened their positions in... Wait a minute, it just skipped. Hold on a second. The negotiations, yeah. So Hamas, they're really... Um, <laughs> They're, they're difficult to deal with, in other words. Um, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the head of the CIA 
Will Burns said that the U.S. may present a new and updated proposal in the coming days. So right now, um, tomorrow is Thursday, September 12th. Um, and I would think that an updated version should be presented on or before Saturday, the 14th of September. So when they do have a polished draft, um, and they have it presented to both parties, either Thursday, September 12th or Friday, September 13th, um, I will come on here immediately at any hour and I will update people on what Hamas agrees upon. Um, because there are still 50 to 100, if not maybe even 101, um, hostages that are being held um, captive in underground facilities, um, underground uh, terrace tunnels. And um, then, okay, yeah, there's World Israel News. They updated um, a day ago, Iran has vowed nightmare attack on Israel. Um and they are pretty much angry at the fact that, um, okay, yeah, they are angry. The Gaza terror group has been degraded to the level of a guerrilla force and is no longer a military formation, says Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Iran, obviously, is pretty angry with this. Um, and they have vowed um, a terrorist attack, a major terrorist attack on Israel um, because of this. The Hamas terror, terror organization has been degraded to the level of a guerrilla force, and this was reported by World Israel News on their official verified Twitter X page. Um, yeah, Hamas terror organization has been degraded to the level of a guerrilla force and no longer constitutes... Um, an organized military formation, Israel's security chief declared Monday, according to the AFP. Speaking with um, foreign journalists at a press briefing at IDF headquarters in the Kiria in um, Tel Aviv, Israel Defense Minister Yoav Gallant Likud said that Israel had secured a strategic opportunity by significantly compromising Hamas's fighting capabilities, suggesting the time was ripe for a deal with the terror group to bring the remaining 101 Israeli captives home, calling it the right thing to do. Israel should achieve an agreement that will bring about a pause for six weeks and bring back hostages, Gallant added. Hamas as a military formation, quote unquote, no longer exists. Hamas is engaged in guerrilla warfare, and we are still fighting Hamas terrorists and pursuing Hamas leadership. Um, and I'm I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm waiting until they find out what's going on with Yayas and War, uh, the masterminds of the October seven uh, massacres. Yeah, what what took place on October um, seven, twenty twenty three? Uh, yeah, th they're going to need to catch Yahya Sinwar. I mean, they already killed um, and assassinated um, Ishmael Haniye. They need to catch Yahya Sinwar, uh, and they have not done so yet. Achieving an agreement is also a strategic opportunity that gives us a high chance to change the security situation on all fronts. Gallant continued alluding to the simmering conflict on Israel's northern frontier against Hezbollah and other Iranian-backed forces. In July, the IDF said it had eliminated over half of Hamas's military leadership in the Gaza Strip and that over 14,000 terrorists from Hamas, armed, armed wing, the Al-Qassam Brigades, had been killed out of roughly 30,000 to 40,000 combatants. The terror group is estimated to have had under arms at the beginning of the war. A month later, Israel's military said the number of terrorists killed in combat in Gaza had risen to 17,000, or nearly half of the roughly 40,000 fatalities the Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry claims were reported during the war. Um, so they are no longer considered or classified 
um, a military force. They're just a guerrilla force at this point, um, which is a lot s smaller in number. Um, and so, bear with me one second. World Israel News also reported September 10, the clock is ticking, the hostages do not have time. Um, Gal Hirsch, Israel's chief negotiator for hostages and missing persons, is reportedly offering safe passage to Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar in exchange for the remaining 101 hostages. In an interview with Bloomberg, Hirsch said, I am ready to provide safe passage to Sinwar, his family, whoever wants to join him. We want the hostages back. We want demilitarization, de-radicalization, of course, a new system that will manage Gaza, he stated. According to the report, the proposal has been under consideration for several days. In parallel, I must work on plans B, C, and D because I must bring the hostages back home. The clock is ticking. The, hostage, the, the hostages do not have time, Hirsch said. Um, in a Telegram post, the spokesperson for Hamas's armed wing, the al Qassam Brigades, Abu Obeda, wrote Netanyahu's insistence on liberating the prisoners through military pressure instead of concluding a deal will mean that they will return to their families inside coffins and their families will have to choose whether they are dead or alive. Um, referring to the IDF rescue of four hostages in Nusayrat in June, he added, let it be clear to everyone that following the incident in Nusayrat, new instructions have been issued to the Mu Muhahirin tasked with guarding the prisoners. An IDF investigation into the killing of six captives whose remains were recovered from Gaza 10 days ago has shed light on their conditions the six hostages faced before their captors murdered them. Um, new evidence shows that the hostages were likely murdered hours before the IDF found them in the tunnel and there is also some indication that they fought back against their captors. Um, the tunnel was so narrow they could barely stand up and no more than two could lie down at a time. There was also very little air and the ventilation was so poor that many of the hostages likely had trouble breathing. The tunnel had no toilets or showers and the hostages had to use bottles of water to bathe themselves, which were also used for drinking. Um, yeah, this is going to have to stop because really... Um, I can't even believe an Israeli negotiator offers safe passage to Yahya Sinwar and his entire family in exchange for the rest of the 101 hostages. You gotta be kidding me. No, the clock is ticking. I mean, Elohim is going to have to break out of the clouds and power of great glory very, very soon. I can just feel it. Um, and so two hours ago, the Times of Israel... Um, they reported that 60 rockets from Lebanon battered the north. The Israeli Defense Force reservist injured by anti-tank missile. Um, so over the past 24 hours, um, 60 rockets have been launched from Lebanon from um, Hezbollah locations and has battered um, the northern portion of Israel. Okay, um, that was reported two hours ago by the Times of Israel. Um, an hour ago, 40 more rockets were fired at north from Lebanon for a total for today alone tops 100 rockets. Okay. Um, and so Times of Israel a day ago reported that Blinken stated U.S. to present um, new hostage ceasefire proposal to Israel, Hamas, very soon, which I've already reported that from Jerusalem Post. Um, I'll leave this link as well. Um, yeah, um, Blinken met with um, a British counterpart, David Lammy, in London. Um, over the past couple of days, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken stated the two countries are determined to end the conflict in Gaza as soon as possible, reports Times of Israel. Um, 
He stated the U.S. is working closely with Qatar and Egypt to bridge any remaining gaps as they craft a new formula for a deal. Very soon, we will put that before the parties and we will see what they say, he says, as pessimism has spread among Israeli and U.S. negotiators in recent days. More than 90% of the issues have been agreed, decided, so we're down to a handful of issues not even a handful of issues that are hard, but are fully resolvable, um, stated Blinken when he was in London um, the other day. He notes the strong interest that everyone in the region has in a ceasefire, stressing that it is clearly in Israel's interest. Lamy in England um, stated the 90% assessment is completely correct and says it is now in the hands of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and in the hands of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar to get us over the line and to take that deal that is on the table, okay? So Times of Israel stated that a copy has been given and delivered to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and another copy of the deal was given to Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar. Um, Lamy added that there can be no role for Hamas going forward while Blinken does not mention the defeat of Hamas. Blinken also notes the threat Iran and its axis pose to Israel. Uh, we are prepared to act together to help Israel defend itself in the future, he stated. Um, and I will leave that link in the description box as well. Um, This next article, it doesn't have anything to do with the peace plan. I posted it on my um, community page the other day. It received a lot of likes. Um, I was watching a Jacob Israel um, live um, broadcast uh, about a day ago, and he was, you know, giving his two cents worth on it. Um, uh, unfortunately, yeah, Israel 365 News, um, a, a lot of their articles are written by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, and I do not believe he is a Messianic Jew. I do believe he is a Jew uh, that attends that type of synagogue where they deny Isaiah 53. It's unfortunate. Uh, all of us who are either Messianics or believers, those of us that are members of the Ecclesia of Philadelphia who believe in all 66 books of the Bible, knowing that Isaiah is the little Bible within the Bible, um, 66 chapters fully align and match um, with all 66 books of the Bible, the KJV Bible. Um, those of us who are believers of Yeshua HaMashiach, we know that John 3.16 and John 3.17 fully agrees with Isaiah 53. Uh, Yeshua the Messiah is, in fact, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. Um, it's sad that, you know, the synagogue of Satan, uh, they want to tell all of their congregants, okay, we're going to tear out the whole ninth uh, chapter of Daniel. Okay, we don't want you to know that the sabbatical week, um, the seven-year time period of Daniel 9.27, it proves, we know that it proves that Yeshua the Messiah, he was baptized in the Jordan River in 27 AD at the beginning of that seven-year time span, that sabbatical week. He was cut off in the midst of that sabbatical week in 31 AD at the age of 33. And then at the end of that sabbatical week, Stephen was stoned, okay? And, and we know that Yeshua the Messiah was cut off. He was crucified on the hill of Calvary. And that is exactly what Isaiah the prophet prophesied about. He is, in fact, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. Okay, he is the only begotten son of Father Yahweh. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is the word made flesh, John 1, 14. He will fulfill all scripture written about him, written in the law of Moses, written in the prophets, written in the Psalms concerning him. Why? Because none of his words will come back to him void as proven in Isaiah 55, 11. Why? Because his words are not bound. He is, in fact, the word made flesh, 1 John 5, 6, and 7. And this article, I, you know, I, I don't mean to go on a Holy Spirit rant, but, <laughs> you know, as a German-English-Hungarian Jew from the tribe of Reuben, uh, you know what? Uh, I mean, no wonder my grandpa John Bloom 
told us nothing about our Jewish heritage for years and years. Um, you know, and he couldn't keep it a secret much longer because my, my grandpa, John Bloom, his last name is B-L-U-M, and it's from the same tribe actor Jeff Goldblum um, is from. You know, Jeff Goldblum stars in Independence Day, uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park movies, um, and my grandpa and um, my great-grandpa, his father, they are both Reubenites, okay? And, and uh, yeah, they're from the same tribe, B-L-U-M. The only difference between their last name and Jeff Goldblum's last name is the fact that Jeff Goldblum has gold attached in front of it and ours doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It's the same tribe. And, you know, my grandpa for decades, we didn't know, we didn't know nothing about our Jewish heritage for years, decades. And, and we were always questioning why is Grandpa John's last name the same last name as Jeff Goldblum's? And why is B-L-O-O-M considered Hungarian? You know what I'm saying? And we were always told, oh, it's German. No, it's not German. <laughs> um, it's not German. No, it's from the tribe of Reuben. And so, um, you know, we for years, we were never told about our, our Jewish heritage. You know, my Grandpa John is 10% Jewish. My mom is 5% Jewish. And I'm only 2.5%. Uh, but really, uh, you know, uh, no wonder he kept it a secret because he didn't want a, anyone within the family to convert to Judaism, which really, uh, you know, it makes absolutely no sense to convert to that synagogue of Satan. Not, you know, with the warning that John wrote on, on the Isle of Patmos when he wrote the book of Revelation. You know what I'm saying? He literally called it the synagogue of Satan. They they don't want none of their congregation members to understand Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Uh, you know, clearly the timeline began 457 BC. And if you add 69 weeks of years to that, if you multiply 69 times 7 and you take that number and add it, to 457 BC, it comes right to 2627 AD, right when Yeshua the Messiah began his ministry. Okay, he was baptized in the Jordan River in 27 AD. The timeline is right there, right there in Daniel 9 24 through 27. Okay, he was cut off in the midst of that sabbatical week, and that literally fulfilled Isaiah 53. Okay, and and you know Jews in the synagogue of Satan they don't want they don't want to know that they don't want to know that they want to tear the whole page of Daniel nine out of the Bible out of out of uh, the nine hundred twenty nine chapters of of the Old Testament they want nothing to do with the two hundred sixty chapters of the New Testament which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt what Isaiah the prophet wrote in Isaiah fifty three it proves that Yeshua the Messiah is God in the flesh. You know, he is God. He is God in the flesh. He doesn't have 46 chromosomes like you and me. He has 23 chromosomes from his mother, Miriam, and he has one non-human Y chromosome from Yahweh the Father for a total of 24 chromosomes. Jews that were in the synagogue of Satan, when they worked in that lab, Ron Wyatt, he took the dried blood samples off from where the blood dripped when Yeshua had his side pierced. Blood dripped down that crack into the earth's surface underneath the stake that he was crucified on, and it dripped on the Ark of the Covenant. They took the dried blood samples and took it to a lab in Jerusalem, okay? And, and they, they were told um, to put the dried blood in normal saline solution for 72 hours and to agitate it gently. The blood became alive, which that, that if it was 100% human blood, that would be impossible. Dry blood is dead blood. That's what Ron Wyatt stated in his testimony, and I'll leave a link to that in the description box. But yeah, the Jews, they were talking like a million miles per hour, um, and they were talking in, in Hebrew or Aramaic, and they were looking at Ron Wyatt, and they says, this blood only has 24 chromosomes. And they asked him, whose blood is this? And he said, it's the blood of your Messiah. And then they became believers. They became believers. He is Yahweh in the flesh. He is God in the flesh. 
And it is a biblical fact that he is a suffering servant. He is the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. I am so sick and tired of dealing with non-believing Jews. You know, I mean, there's a war going on. These hostages, they have been dying. And if they die and they don't, they have never accepted Yeshua the Messiah as, as their Lord and Savior. Okay. If they attend that synagogue of Satan, they go to hell. That's John 14, 6. That's John 3, 16. You know, Yeshua the Messiah is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. No one can get to Yahweh the Father except through Yeshua, okay? No one. And, and recently, I, I mean, I don't mean to go on a Holy Spirit rant, but on Twitter X, um, where I get all of my updates, um, everybody knows that I use Twitter X and Telegram and uh, websites like End Times Headlines and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I... I <laughs> Recently, I have had um, Jews who, and I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that, but Jews that I would think would, would be Messianic because my cover photo, it, it quotes Acts 17.11. I am a brand that searches the scriptures daily to find out if certain things are so, okay? My cover photo on YouTube and on Twitter X is the same cover photo. They should know that Acts 17.11 is in the New Testament, but there are Jews that come on my Twitter X page and they give their two cents worth about what, what's going on in the Middle East and the conflict and the hostages that are still being held captive, 101 of them total. And I, I, I automatically assume that these people are messianic and they're believers of all 66 books of the Bible. But no, I mean, I have been persecuted for believing in Jesus Christ over the last week. It's absolutely insane. I've had to block non-believers and I'm like, you know what? Hey, it's your choice. You can accept him. He is the only begotten son of Father Yahweh. He is the word made flesh. He is, in fact, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. If you have a problem, hell will welcome you with open arms. I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't mean to be rude, people, but hell is hot and hell is real. And Yeshua HaMashiach is the only way. He is God in the flesh. Um, and so, yeah, uh, this article, um, it was written by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, who is a Jew, um, of that synagogue. He does not believe in the Messiah Yeshua. Unfortunately, the day he drops dead, he will go straight to hell unless he accepts Yeshua as his Lord and Savior. Um, and so, yeah, but he wrote an article, um, that, um, Israel 365 News, he wrote an article on August 28th. And I'm going to go through the article and read most of it. I don't want to read it all word for word because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But he quotes Numbers 2417. And there is a Nova star um, called T. Corona Borealis or TCRB. Um, and it's going to shine brightly this month in the month of September. Okay. Um, and yeah, I have to read it because it's hard to explain. So I'm just going to begin and read from the top of the article. Um, what I see for them is not yet. What I behold will not be soon. Um, a star rises from Yaakov. A scepter comes forth from Israel, um, which Yaakov is Aramaic for Jacob, okay? Uh, a star rises from Jacob. A scepter comes forth from Israel. It smashes the brow of Moab, the foundation of all children of Shet, Numbers 24, 17. And so the article begins, scientists predict that a nova in the star system called T. Corona Borealis or TCRB will be visible to people on earth in the next month. TCRB, which this was published on August 28th. So they're talking about the month of September. Um, TCRB will appear 1,500 times brighter than usual, making it the 50th brightest star in the night sky. This nova may just be the star of Jacob, Balaam, described as presaging the appearance of the Messiah. And we know that there will be an October eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets. And I'm still questioning if that's the day of the rapture. I'm not carving any date in stone. But yeah, um, this Feast of Trumpets is heavily marked. It's a high rapture watch date. Um, that's if we're still here. Okay, and so this Nova, um, this bright, bright star, may just be the star of Jacob Balaam described 
as presaging the appearance of the Messiah. A nova is the temporary brightening of a star before it fades again, not to be confused with a supernova that occurs when a massive star explodes at the end of its life. TCRB Nova Star is a binary star system made up of a red giant and a white dwarf. They orbit each other every 228 days at about half the distance between Earth and the Sun. In this case, the Earth-sized white dwarf is slowly stripping hydrogen away from the ancient red giant. Once enough hydrogen accumulates on the white dwarf, um, the growing pressure and heat trigger a thermonuclear blast visible from Earth. As TCRB Nova Star is 2,630 light years from Earth, Light from this binary system requires 2,630 years to arrive at Earth, okay? The nova we will see occurred over 2,000 years ago, but its light will reach us next month, which is this month in September of 2024. Um, TCRB is one of 10 recurrent novas recorded that erupt on time scales of less than a century. On average, TCRB undergoes a NOVA process once every 80 years. Um, TCRB was first observed in the fall of 1217 AD by Burchard, um, abbot of Erzberg, Germany, who recorded a faint star that for a time shone with great light. Observations during its past to NOVA in 1866 and in 1946 um, showed that TCRB became slightly brighter about 10 years before the nova was visible from Earth. After brightening, the light from TCRB briefly dimmed, indicating an eruption before September 2024, before the end of September 2024. Okay, so it might erupt this month. I'm not sure we're going to have to check into this. Um, astronomers predict that the next NOVA event will occur between February and September of 2024. Um, scientists are excited as this will be the first outburst since modern spectroscopic observations have been available. During the next NOVA event, TCRB, also known as the Blaze Star, is expected to jump to second magnitude, making it similar in brightness to the North Star Polaris. It could be visible to the naked eye for several days and potentially visible for over a week through binoculars before dimming and returning to obscurity. The next nova for TCRB is not expected for another 80 years, making it making this a potential once-in-a-lifetime astronomical event. Um, Ephraim Palvanov, a teacher and author, writes the blog Maim Akronim, Final Waters, named for the little-known Jewish ritual of washing the fingers after a meal. Like the eponymous mitzvah, the blog covers Jewish subjects that are misunderstood or not normally discussed. In a recent lecture, Palvanov described the current wars in Ukraine and Israel as consistent with end of days predictions recorded in classical Jewish literature. Palvanov emphasized that he was not making a prediction or a prophecy, but was describing an astronomical event as described in Jewish literature. Um, and then he wrote, Bear in mind that this man does not believe in Yeshua the Messiah, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. He stated, quote unquote, we know that probably one of the oldest prophecies and traditions about the Moshiach, who we know is Yeshua the Messiah, comes from Balaam, a Gentile prophet who came to curse Israel, but couldn't curse them, Palvanov said. Instead, he gives a prophecy that actually says, I will tell you what will happen at the end of days. Um, what I see for them is not yet. What I behold will not be soon. A star rises from Jacob. A scepter comes forth from Israel. It smashes the brow of Moab, the foundation of all children of Shet. Numbers 24, 17. 
Um, it's one of the few places that the Torah uses the expression end of days, Palvanov notes. Balaam says that he is looking far into the future and he prophesies that a star will emerge from Jacob. Of course, Christians adopted this in the nativity scene and the star of Bethlehem, Palvanov added. And so we, we know that um, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, uh, yeah, um, yeah, there are some Christians that do believe um, um, that the star of David is in Matthew 2, uh, verse 1 through 12, okay? Um, but this star is classified as the star of Jacob. Um, and so, yeah, there, there, yeah, it, it's a biblical fact. The Magi, um, according to Matthew 2, verse 1 through 12, they followed the star of David, um, it, that that's biblical. Um, yeah, the, the star of Bethlehem. They did they they did follow the star of Bethlehem. That's biblical. Um, completely biblical. And so yeah, you know we have to pray for these people that only stick to Torah and they totally ignore Isaiah fifty three. Um, the the timeline um, of Daniel nine twenty four to twenty seven, which proves the exact date, the exact year that Yeshua was crucified. I'm not going to start that over. <laughs> Sorry, people. Um, and so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he made commentary on that. And, um, but yeah, this star that is supposed to erupt um, in the month of September, possibly, um, this would be the star of Jacob, okay? And so, yeah. Um, and it, it is literally mentioned, let me reread Numbers 24, 17. What I see for them is not yet what I behold will not be soon, okay? This is what Moses wrote in Numbers 24, 17. You know, obviously, um, back when Moses wrote the Torah, you know, it, it's not going to happen in his time. That's why he wrote, what I see for them is not yet. People living on the earth in the last days, what I behold will not be soon. A star rises from Jacob. A scepter comes forth from Israel. It smashes the brow of Moab, the foundation of all children of Shet. That's Numbers 24, 17. Um, and so, yeah, um, it's one of the few places that the Torah uses the expression, end of days, Palvanov notes. Um, Balaam says that he is looking far into the future and he prophesies that a star will emerge from Jacob. Okay, so is this that star? We will just have to wait and see. I don't think it's a coincidence that it, it, it has been expected to erupt. Um, between February of February of 2024 all the way to September of 2024. And we know that um, that solar eclipse that occurs on October 2nd, um, it will occur on the Feast of Trumpets, okay? And so, yeah, um, I don't know if these are signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. You know, I don't know what these represent, but obviously these are signs in the sun, moon, and stars. You know, th these are Genesis 114 um, signs. And, and so, yeah, we have to take note of this, you know. And so um, that's why I'm kind of questioning if we're going to be flying this year. <laughs> it would be nice if the rapture would occur in 2024. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, everyone knows I'm going to be watching this Feast of Trumpets uh, to see if anything happens. But, yeah, I, I believe this star is a sign. Um, and that this article might be, even though that it was written by non-believers, we do have to consider some of the information. Um, okay. Palvanov explained that the prophecy of the Star of Jacob was applied to Simon Bar Kosiba, leader of the Second Jewish Revolt of 132 CE, whose adopted name Bar Kokba meant son of a star in Aramaic. The failure of the Bar Kokhba revolt, which was considered a political messiah, had a large impact on the interpretation of the Star of Jacob. Um, the failure of the revolt led to sages to de-emphasize the eschatology of the Star of Jacob. That led to a preference for the explanation that the Star of Jacob was no longer relevant since it was described as already happening in the time of King David. There was always, even in ancient times, an association of Moshiach or a potential Messiah with the star of Jacob. Balaam even prophesied that this star will mark the end of Amalek. 
um, which is mentioned in Numbers 24.20. He saw Amalek and, taking up his theme, he said a leading nation is Amalek, but its fate is to perish forever. And we know that um, non-believers and Muslims, um, you know, anyone who takes the mark of the beast, they will perish forever following the second coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, what Zechariah the prophet prophesied about in Zechariah 14, 4 and 5, and what John prophesied about in Revelation 19, 14. You know, he will literally crash back down to the Mount of Olives, um, and there will be a battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat for the parting of the land, which will fulfill Joel 3, 2. Bear with me one second. And so in this article, like if you read the actual article, I will have it in the description box and in the pinned comment. I believe that Palvinov, um, when he explained that the prophecy of the star of Jacob was applied to Simon Bar Kosiba, um, leader of the second Jewish revolt of 132 CE, whose adopted name Bar Kokhba meant son of a star in Aramaic, um, obviously, you know, we know what the scriptures say in Matthew 24, 24, there shall arise false Christs and false messiahs, and, and they will deceive the very elect. You know, obviously, uh, the Jewish people, they are looking for a false messiah, and uh, you know what? When Yeshua HaMashiach crashes back down to the Mount of Olives, all false messiahs claiming to be him, they will be killed instantly. They will be. There have been, for centuries, there have been many false messiahs that have risen up. The Jewish people, uh, you know, those that attend the synagogue of Satan, they don't want to. They don't want to acknowledge the scriptures in Isaiah fifty three or in Daniel nine twenty four through twenty seven. They don't want to. They want nothing to do uh, with the whole New Testament. You know, um, they don't want to read the account that John gave in John chapter three, which fully aligns with Isaiah fifty three. Um, they they are looking for a false Messiah, and when it happens, when that abomination of desolation is set up, they're going to realize that they have been duped big time. Uh, we all know the scriptures. Matthew 24, 24 makes clear that there will be, there, there will arise false Christ and false messiahs. And so um, I will leave this link. Um, if, if anything happens to this, um, wait a minute, let me get the actual name of it. T. Corona Borealis or TCRB. Um, if this Nova star does erupt, Okay, before the end of the month, I will come on here immediately and and um, update everybody. Um, and so, yeah, I, I kind of, I don't like Israel 365 news, but <laughs> this is the only article I can find on the internet that describes the prophecy, okay? And so if this star does erupt, this, yeah, this Nova uh, star system has been around for 2,000 years, okay? And it's going to be visible, um... It, it's going to be visible from Earth this month only. And, and we know that Rosh Hashanah coming up, um, the Feast of Trumpets, October 2nd, we, we know that Rosh Hashanah, um, yeah, Rosh Hashanah, that solar eclipse, um, the annular solar eclipse, the Ring of Fire, it represents uh, the wedding ring that Yeshua will propose. It, it's a sign um, for the bride, the one woman bride who is hidden. Um, and there will be a day when that one woman bride who knows to remain hidden, she will come out and say, I am tired of referring to the bride as a second individual, <laughs> you know? Uh, she has to remain hidden, you know, uh, the bride is hidden, and she's not allowed to talk about who she is, and so, yeah, uh, um, but the bride is waiting, um, he has put that on my heart, and, you know, the annular solar eclipse um, that occurs on October 2nd, um, you know, a, a total solar eclipse, it does not form a ring of fire, okay, an annular solar eclipse forms a ring of fire, and it'll look like a wedding ring, and I believe that it's a sign for the bride, you know, I hope that the rapture, uh, the first watch translation of the bride and the rapture of the ecclesia, which it will be very few in number, I hope that it is in 2024, um, if not, then we, we will have to wait, um, and so, yeah, I will leave all these links in the in the actual description box and in the pinned comment. Um, we are getting very, very close, brothers and sisters. Um, when more peace updates are updated for Thursday or Friday or even Saturday um, or Sunday, whenever, whenever Shabbat is over, um, if any news headlines um, 
you know, is published to the internet, um, I will let everyone know if Hamas and Israel agree on a proposal. Um, I know that, you know, Qatar and Egypt and uh, Anthony Blinken from the Biden administration, they are trying to work out a deal and get the 101 hostages released. Um, and so if anything happens, I will come on here immediately and let everyone know. I pray we see our blessed hope of Titus 2.13 very, very soon. Shalom.